re-election cycle in Kenya has been accompanied by controversy due to a toxic political environment, which often results in conflict and crisis. This leads to fragmentation of the nation and an ethnicity-driven propaganda, which has had a negative influence on Kenyans. The need to stop the cycle motivated a strong focus on prevention and preventing the recurrence of electoral violence by various key stakeholders. Inter-Religious Council of Kenya, IRCK, in partnership with various stakeholders and partners, took up the role of calling for peace, cohesion, countering hate speech, and strengthening mediation capacities of religious leaders before, during, and after the elections, and to address immediate and underlying causes of conflict and division through religious cooperation and action. Kenya is a, is a country of faith. Nearly everybody in this country, if not all, the people of this country are people of faith. Since 2018, or rather after the general election uh, of 2017, we came together after the elections and started the journey towards the elections 2022. From the very start, there was lots of research and analysis and hotspot mapping and risk mapping that was done by partners. And there were quite a number of uh, platforms that were created to do early warning, early response, including work on social media analysis and uh, online mediation. <laughs> We used different platforms to call for peace, uh, for peace messages as Interreligious Council of Kenya. We used our congregational platforms. We also used digital platforms where we did social media campaigns where we advocated for peace, we called for peace. We also used our interfaith youth to use these platforms to call for peace. Much before these elections, we prepared the booklet with the Muslims, Christians and Hindus. How to elect good leaders that we have that confidence. They can lead us. We can increase our economy and decrease the poverty. Many people attend religious ceremonies and you, you can reach to, to many people. I believe that the faith one has in God, in Almighty, in an external power, contributes so much in giving one inner peace as an individual and this culminates in the society's promotion of peace and the country in the long run also benefits. There was no violence across the country, no incidences of violence before during and after. The youth are a very integral part in the mediation team because most of the time the fingers only lie on them. They are the ones who are being used to cause chaos. They are the ones being used by the politicians. By bringing them on board, it will be easier for them to talk to fellow youths and bring sanity in the electoral process. And that is what happened. Most of the youth downed their tools and voted peacefully and went home to sleep. The women's situation during the 2022 general election objective was to increase the participation of women in electoral processes and mitigate violence against women in elections among other GBV-related issues. Mediation and peace coexist. UNSCR 1325 came with a resolution. More women in peace building. The Kenya Women Mediation Team has proven that women can resolve conflict by dialogue only. We had a situation room in which we're also responding to incidences, you know, whether violence against women or any, any sorts of trouble anywhere, and linked up with the police, linked up with NCIC. We did a lot actually on the situation room, whereby we were making calls and receiving calls across the country, whereby we involved both men, women, and the youth. Before the elections, we came up with the National Peace and Mediation Team.
The idea of forming uh, this national team originated from the Interfaith uh, Council of Kenya. And Interfaith Council of Kenya, IRCK, uh, is a national body with, with networks throughout uh, the country. The National Peace and Mediation Team played a very vital role in creating awareness, peace, and the importance of Kenyans being matured enough to take whatever results will be declared and follow the law. The diversity of the people involved. The team in the National Peace and Mediation team was made of people from different backgrounds, but involved in the peace missions. After the 2022 general elections, the presidential elections were disputed by the Azimio coalition who lost to the Kenya Kwanza coalition and as a result presented the case to the Supreme Court. During the very last uh, phase of the elections when we were at BOMAS, the National Telling Center, the situation was almost getting uh, out of hand. I tell you for free, it was not an, a walk in the park, it was not easy. There are moments when you feel like the, everybody wants to run away from you. You have to tell people, please hold, keep holding. Especially when we went to Bomas, probably I, I think you saw what happened. People want to run away from you and you are telling them, no, let's hold on, let's stay on. This is our country, if it burns, let's burn with it now and let's hold. This is the moment we are called for. We have to hold, we have to keep on and on and on until the last minute. And I thank the religious leadership. Believe you me, if it was not for their standing strong, this country would have gone to the dong. There are a number of interventions that we took uh, to measure that. And uh, the, the, the most significant, uh, I could say, uh, was the social media analysis. And this is uh, the kind of predictive uh, analysis that we did to check whether the levels of fear were increasing or decreasing, depending on what people were saying. Th that uh, program also looked at uh, the linkage between what was being said on social media and what was, was being said outside social media. That is the information now that informed the decision of the team. From that now, uh, the team uh, had to develop uh, strategies on how it could engage uh, in its work. For example, to use shuttle diplomacy. And one of the most important footprints of the National Peace and Mediation Team, uh, religious leaders playing an important role in it, was to do shuttle diplomacy to the contestants and anybody who was key in the electoral process. Uh, for example, visiting the, the two contestants, the former Prime Minister, the Honorable Raila Odinga, in his home and having pastoral care and, and, and you know, basically uh, encouraging him to, to continue on the path of peace, to seek truth and justice. And uh, also the current president, uh, who was also a contestant, uh, to also do pastoral care with him and uh, urge him uh, to be magnanimous and restrained in, in celebrating uh, the win and former president as well, uh, Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, uh, also urging him uh, for the transition. I'm a businessman. It gives me a lot of peace that I was able to participate and contributed my time and efforts in bringing peace to our fellow Kenyans. As if I did not make my effort to bring peace, I may not have a business to enjoy. Neither would I have the opportunity to enjoy the profits Communication played a big role. I believe that uh, what we need to do even after the elections are done, messages, different platforms should be still be used to call for peace, to call for youth now to start exercising their democratic right. They can still use the same platforms to call for accountability of their leaders and to hold them accountable. The thinking of the Kenyans this time, including these eminent people who formed the team, was that uh, we may not need another Kofi Annan to come to this country when we can have our own sons and daughters who can do our mediation. That's, that's a good lesson. And many countries, you know, the African Union and, and the international observers who were there, including even Western diplomats, they said this, these are very good lessons other countries to learn from Kenya. Politics is a game that ends, but we should preserve peace and life 
no one should die because of a political seat.